Buongiorno Milan. I'm sorry I can't join you today, um, but I'm saying hi with this little picture before then giving my talk uh, in voiceover. If you have any questions for me or want to get in touch to further this discussion, I will leave my email address on the final slide. Thanks for listening. So I'm going to talk about some of the reforms uh, in various areas of law that have to do with social parenthood in Sweden and quickly also some of the notable reforms in our Nordic neighboring countries with a special emphasis on the child and parenthood related uh, regulations. I, um, I want to begin with a comment putting this into context about the current events in and around Sweden. Um, contrary to popular belief, life in the Nordic welfare states uh, is not um, an idyllic situation um, at any point in time, but um, especially recently, uh, the Nordic countries have definitely been put to the test in recent years. Uh, not only is there war on European soil very close to home for us in the north, since we share a border, for example, with Russia, uh, the world has also been affected by the pandemic, even in Sweden, where um, efforts were made to minimize the harms uh, given our spread out population and some other uh, benefits of the system, like high trust in government we were able to avoid some of the harms, but nonetheless, families have been affected and uh, borders have been closed to social family members in certain circumstances. And meanwhile, unprecedented climate change and um, increased energy costs and uh, inflation of prices, these things have all been affecting the Nordic countries and the everyday financial and emotional health of Nordic families. So in, in Sweden, you may have also heard that we have been facing with a lot of shock and alarm, uh, some rising crime rates and violence among very young people, mainly boys and men, um, may, many of them with ties to uh, Im immigration into Sweden um, of the families or of them as unaccompanied minors from other national and ethnic traditions and also from nearby countries where gang crime is already more established than it has previously been in Sweden. So um, there's a lot to deal with, including through the family law. Uh, it hasn't had too much effect on social parenthood outside of the uh, hesitation of the Swedish lawmaker to, for example, recognize, uh, continue to recognize um, plural marriage. It is no longer allowed. Um, even if you had no connection at all to Sweden, when uh, you entered a marriage with more than one person, um, it's no longer uh, possible for your multiple uh, partner, your multiple spouses to be recognized in Sweden subsequently. Um, and so those kinds of things to hold fast to certain values and gender equality principles within the Swedish system have been having an effect. Um, and the conservative political forces that have um, gained power recently, uh, relatively conservative, but they have um, somewhat rejected the focus on integration into the society that our previous uh, social democratic led government had um, put into place. And so our new conservative coalition government has in the fa past few months, for example, um, cut national funding uh, for foreign humanitarian aid outside of uh, the Ukraine budget, which is high. Um, they've, they've cut uh, funding for research projects that Swedish academics were conducting or applying to conduct with uh, their colleagues in developing countries. Um, and the government has also ended our um, overtly feminist foreign policy. What we still stand for gender equality, according to the government, but will no longer, no, we no longer want to say so, apparently. So it's not an easy time, even in the Nordics. I just wanted to make sure I, I made those comments. Um, on the other hand, um, there are a lot of positive things going on. New academic and legislative reform 
uh, related research and development of uh, you know pilot projects and things trying to um, improve family law and medically assisted reproduction related to social parenthood um, trying to improve our um, protection of human rights both of children and somewhat more reluctantly of parents and our compliance with EU law and other international norms so we have had some very welcome legal changes that I want to quickly move over to um, talking about. Um, this is in the context, too, of there being very many social parents in Sweden. Um, even if we limit the, the definition of social parent to parents with no legal uh, relationship, no custody or legal parenthood over the child, um, of the 25% of children who don't live with their two biological parents in Sweden, 40% uh, have at least one uh, of these bonus parent figures in their lives that, that, that don't have any legal rights. And this has been addressed by um, recent reform initiatives, trying to decide how we can strengthen the children's rights to uh, meet, maintain important contacts with these social parents. Uh, that hasn't been in, enacted yet, but it's on the way. So I've also previously spoken at workshops for Just Parent about the fact that social parents in Sweden are outside of the law working on their own quasi or extra legal solutions to allow that their families to live with, for example, three parents that all have uh, some kind of uh, position in the life of the child. And um, you can see media reporting about that, um, the LGBTQ plus I plus community um, has put out both research and um, and uh, more public um, popular documents and, and books and things about these uh, efforts. So I'm talking about the legal regulation, but there is a lot else going on. Um, this is uh, just a, a smattering, a few things that we have um, had recently enacted into law in Sweden. Um, for example, the 1st of April, the 2016, uh, after that time, single women have been able to use uh, IVF, in vitro fertilization in Sweden, and become sole parents to children if, uh, if they qualify for those uh, medical treatments. And um, since January 2019, IVF has been available uh, to couples and to single women with uh, both sperm and egg being donated. So in other words, um, the, the recipient would have no genetic tie to the child and this can include embryo donation. This is also allowed. Um, the limitations on this, though, include um, that there always must be a lämplighetsprövning, uh, which is a, um, a test of whether the um, parents receiving the treatment are um, appropriate parents uh, so that the child can be protected. Um, and this can be somewhat limiting on the rights of parents. So it's a, it's a tension. Um, we also continue to have one of the strongest, um, maybe harsh, uh, laws about genetic testing in Sweden. Men can be genetically tested against their will uh, in accordance with the Act on Genetic Testing, even um, if it involves collecting them with police force, and that has been held to be in line with, with human rights norms. Um, it was uh, modified, that law, as recently as 2022, maybe 2021, um, but it has not been changed. Um, but it has to be genetic testing in accordance with one of these paternity type cases. And there are very few paternity um, paternities confirmed by judgment in Sweden today. Um, also, as of the 1st of January 2019, trans, transsexual parents uh, had uh, it entered into the Parent and Children's Code that they shall be called mother or father based on their current legal sex and not their past legal sex. So in other words, we could have a father to a child who gave birth to the child, and that has been confirmed in law in Sweden. Also, even more recently, the 1st of January 2022, the parenthood presum presumption that is so well known in many countries around the world for uh, the, the spouse of a person giving birth has now been extended to the female spouses of people who give birth. Um, and I use those neutral gender pronouns um, for a reason, because Swedish law tries to be gender neutral and regardless of if these people have changed um, legal sex or 
uh, their other, whether they're married or cohabitant, um, a lot of these rules uh, work the same way. An exception, however, is the uh, fatherhood and parenthood presumptions. Um, without that legal marriage, um, a, a cohabitant partner uh, needs to confirm their parenthood um, before they have the automatic um, parenthood responsibilities um, put upon them uh, by automatic action of law. Uh, all right, so under current law, just to summarize quickly, in Sweden, there remains no third or fourth, um, but no possibility to have a third or fourth parent or parental responsibility uh, awarded. So families with more than two responsible adults are still uh, disfavored or not, not recognized. Uh, there is a strong mater-esque presumption. So the woman giving birth or the person giving birth is the legal mother and this is not a presumption that uh, thus far can be overcome. Um, it's not a relevant fact who the genetic mother is. Uh, so one could uh, say that in a sense, the surrogate mothers uh, who never intended to be mothers to the child, um, maybe there are some kind of unwilling social parent um, in this scenario, similar to a sperm donor who uh, is forced to be the legal parent in some instances under the law or has been in the past. Um, during a marriage-like partnership, uh, we currently have the ability to delegate to a social parent without legal rights otherwise um, some of the legal parents' responsibilities. Uh, for example, to go to the school meetings or to take the child to the doctor um, via use of a regular um, power of attorney reg regulated outside of the family law. This, of course, is only a delegation and it can be withdrawn by the legal parent. So it doesn't really protect children uh, with their social parents in, in the case of partnership breakdown. Um, the possibility, though, uh, to order for a court to order contact for the child and the social parent even after a separation um, between the cohabitant or married uh, social parent and the legal parent um, that has uh, that exists in law, but in practice it is extremely difficult to access, which is why um, there has been some uh, talk about changing this, and there's been a suggestion actually by an expert legislative committee to um, make some changes to this to make it easier for social parents to access the courts and get visitation uh, ordered on behalf of the children with themselves. So, but until that time, according to the Parents Code at 615A, um, any request to the court for an order of contact must be brought by social services, and they very, very um, infrequently bring them uh, in favor of social parents. In fact, um, there was a study done, uh, and between 2018 and 2020, um, the, uh, the social welfare committees in the various regions of Sweden, the various counties, um, responded that um, very few actions. There were 110 requests for the, them to um, file court actions on behalf of social parents, or behalf of third parties in any case, and only six actions were filed, so 5% of cases. Um, 90 of those that were filed were on behalf of grandparents wanting grandparent contact, and only seven were from social parents. And um, yeah, in the end, only one action uh, was filed on behalf of a social parent. So this is a, an area definitely ripe for um, improved uh, legal um, application, if, if not change in the statutory wording. Um, so we want to increase the available protections uh, for at least getting contact orders. I need to move quickly here. Um, the expert group in 2022 in Sweden um, has decided not to recommend any recognition um, for any really legal um, rights to third or fourth uh, social parents, uh, not rights to parentage or parental responsibility. Um, but they, they have recommended that during a marriage-like partnership, maybe a delegation um, via some kind of special parenting power of attorney that would be held in government databases and accessible by schools and pharmacies and doctor's offices um, could be implemented to help 
make easier the day-to-day -day life of families with social parents. But of course, after a relationship breakdown, uh, that could be removed. And, um, and that is why they need to also strengthen the um, possibility to get a contact order for those parents. Um, they, they also suggested, among other things, that adoption should still be possible even after a couple has separated. So that, for example, a social parent uh, from a child's past can become their legal um, parent at, when they're an adult and sort of confirm that existing relationship, irrespective of whether they are still in a romantic relationship with the other uh, parent. Um, so the implications here. Um, we can say that there are tensions in the Swedish law, and I think you see this in all the Nordic countries, which I'll quickly get to in a second, um, between the gen genetic and the social um, priorities, protecting children's actual de facto uh, relationships and um, ensuring their knowledge of and that parenthood is confirmed for their um, genetic parents. Uh, there's international law pressures, of course, and uh, we all know that some of these things uh, could be called a, a King Solomon's dilemma. Um, how can we split the baby here and satisfy everyone's uh, needs? And I have some ideas about that that I'll be publishing in an article um, in the coming months. Um, but I would, I would conclude that Sweden is both progressive and conservative, especially in how um, reluctant the lawmakers are to allow the courts to be used to enforce children and social parent rights. Um, this is true throughout um, the law on assisted reproduction also, uh, that the, the country is both progressive and somewhat conservative. Um, for example, there are um, opportunities to uh, even single parents and same-sex parents and trans parents um, to access these medical services um, but on the other hand, there are stringent requirements as to age and as to um, uh, as to um, how many treatments one can uh, receive and as to prior behavior in life. Uh, for example, if someone has been, if their partner had been um, sterilized via, via a vasectomy, then um, a woman could be denied IVF because um, they, they just don't fall into the qualified, uh, the qualified category of people who are prioritized to receive that treatment. Um, so it can feel a little harsh uh, to people actually facing um, the need for assisted fertilization. Um, and of course, surrogate arrangements abroad uh, are still uh, disfavored and the lawmaker is sometimes uh, compromising children and social parents um, rights in Sweden in order to dissuade uh, people with you know connections to Sweden from going abroad and we've had a whole line of cases um, that nonetheless on, on the other hand have found that um, European Convention of Human Rights Article 8 would be violated if uh, if there was no possible path to adoption for a, an intended mother for example um, and, uh, and therefore they have said that uh, sometimes we do need to recognize the foreign judgment, even though we find it um, morally against the, um, the, the basic uh, premises of the family law system in Sweden. Um, surrogate arrangements uh, have been, um, uh, th there has been a suggestion from another expert committee and that intended mothers that you know, use surrogacy prior to being having anything to do with Sweden should have their parent recognize, parenthood recognized in Sweden. So it's really more of a discouraging the people who are from um, Sweden and go abroad uh, from using surrogacy more than it is a um, failure to respect uh, comedy between nations. Um, I've already spoken a little bit about assisted reproduction. Um, they are difficult to satisfy requirements, as I said, and the requirements on recognition um, of the second parent's parenthood or, or retention of the second parent's parenthood after IVF um, have actually been uh, made more stringent in recent years. Um, if the child does not have a right to information on their donor in another country, for example, or in a private clinic in Sweden, um, then the, the parenthood for the second parent can be um, terminated um, uh, even, uh, even where be prior to 2019 it, uh, it would be binding on that parent who had consented 
to the IVF treatment, regardless of whether the child had the right to know um, the, their genetic origins. So it's getting more stringent in that sense. Um, and at the same time, it's getting more progressive or, or um, liberal uh, in that gender equality for same-sex female spouses has been increased uh, with the parenthood uh, presumption um, extended to such uh, spouses of um, female uh, people who give birth um, effective the 1st of January 2022. I've gone over time, so I'm trying to very quickly go through this, but I want to quickly name um, that basically looking at the other Nordic countries, they are also in a very similar situation to Sweden. You can see the conflicting priorities um, and, uh, and sometimes the unsatisfy unsatisfactory results that have been coming out of legal changes and, and court case decisions in these countries. Uh, for example, Norway had a case uh, just uh, that came out in 2022 where a father, the Supreme Court of Norway decided that um, the man who is a legal father and social father of a child and actually the parent with whom the child was living, um, once he was removed as a parent because it was revealed by the mother that he was not actually the genetic parent, um, he had no rights beyond um, a right to some visitation with the child, or the, the child had a right to visitation with him. Um, in Denmark, there also are some, some of these controversies. Um, Non-consensual adoption by foster parents is controversial. That gets into the public law side of things, but um, extending rights uh, to take over uh, parental responsibility or you know to adopt take over parenthood um, for these social parents that are foster parents um, from the biological parents is something that is in many of the nordic countries favored in the interests of the of the child best interests of the child uh, but is controversial from um, sort of a, a right to genetic origins and culture perspective in finland in for example 2019 there was a reform that allowed visitation rights uh, to be strengthened with social parents, um, and they're doing a lot of gender equality um, and, and right to define one's own gender kind of legal changes as well. Uh, but there's also some very conservative ideas there. Um, and in Iceland, uh, similarly, uh, 2021 statutory change to the mother and father terms in the law. Um, and they made special terms as Sweden did for trans parents. Um, and that, but there are similar court cases to what we've seen in Sweden uh, and other places. None of these countries are uh, pro surrogacy at this point, although there's movement in that direction. Um, anyway, thank you so much. Sorry, I went 22 minutes, 22 and a half minutes. This is my email address if you, as I say, would like to get in touch. Um, have a wonderful day there in Italy.